Hyundai wasn't going to leave its Tucson looking out of place in its more aggressively styled SUV lineup. And so what you see here is the facelifted version of its popular mid-size model. Admittedly, it doesn't look exactly like a Kona or a Santa Fe. Both of those look, well, a little bit more evil looking. And the changes are more than just cosmetic when it comes to this updated Tucson. They go beyond just what you see in front of you. The tech's been upgraded, the diesel drivetrain seen some changes, and the model range has been tweaked too. You can read the full detailed review for all the nitty gritty, but let's take a look at how the new Tucson model range stacks up. The four-strong Tucson range now kicks off with the entry-level GO model, which starts proceedings at below 30 grand. The next step up is the Active X, listing between 32 and 40 grand, and then you can choose the Elite model if you want a bit more kit, with prices between 38 and 45 grand. And the flagship model remains the Highlander, which completes the range just below $50,000. Let's take a closer look at the cosmetic changes. The cascading grille at the front of the new Tucson really dominates the design and while the headlights haven't changed in terms of their shape, the inlays have and there's a more angular LED in there plus there's another more angular LED down low on the bumper. You can differentiate the Highlander model from the rest of the range because it has LED headlights as well where the rest of them, well the look is a bit dulled by the projector halogens that are fitted. And you can also differentiate this high-spec model by the chrome grille treatment. Now, at the rear, you might notice that the taillights do look a little bit different to the predecessor model, and that's because they've done pretty much the same thing at the back as they did at the front. So the taillight shape itself doesn't change, but the inlays do. And you might also notice these reflectors, which are a bit like the i30 hatchback. They sit a little bit higher than they used to, and it doesn't change the game, but it does add a little bit of difference compared to the pre-facelift model. Now, what about the interior? The changes inside the cabin include a new tablet style media system which sits up on top of the dashboard and comes in a 7 inch size in the entry level model and an 8 inch size in the three higher spec versions. In those versions you get digital radio and sat nav built in but every model now comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is a nice addition. Some people may have preferred where it used to be located which was down here where the vents are now but I think that having it up in your line of sight is actually a nice safety feature. There are other changes to the dashboard as well, of course because the screen's moved up there's a nice wide feeling to the dashboard, it actually looks like a shrunken version of the Santa Fe's dash, which is no bad thing, and you can now get it in multiple colours, well a couple of colours so it's at least not black on black on black. The controls are all really logically positioned and everything feels nice in the hand as well. Plus storage is really well considered. There are two cup holders up front, you get a wireless phone charger in this high spec model, plus you get bottle holders in all four doors and well yeah, they've just thought of pretty much everything that you could need to store in the cabin of your car. Now what about the back seat? The Tucson isn't one of the bigger mid-sized SUVs in the segment, but the space on offer is very accommodating. I'm six foot tall, this driver's seat is in my position, and I've got easily enough knee room and toe room, and even headroom, even in this high-spec Highlander model with the big panoramic roof, which is a big bonus. Kids will be well and truly happy. There are ISOFIX child seat anchor points, and there's a USB port in the back keep the devices charged which will keep them entertained. You also have rear seat air vents and as I said up front the storage is well sorted. Bottle holders in the doors, mat pockets on the seat backs and a flip down centre armrest as well. Now what about the all important boot space? The Tucson has a good size boot, bigger than a Nissan Qashqai or Mazda CX-5 but not quite as big as a Nissan X-Trail or Honda CRV. Every model has a full size matching spare wheel too, which is a bonus, particularly if you do a lot of country road driving. As for safety, every Tucson can now be had with a safety pack. It's standard on the top two models, but optional on the bottom two. It includes auto emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross traffic alert. So, what's it like to drive then? 
The model I'm in now is the Highlander with the turbo petrol all-wheel drive drivetrain and it's the second most expensive version of the Tucson that you can buy. It feels pretty damn nice in here but does it feel the price tag? Maybe not quite. There are some rival SUVs out there, like say the Mazda CX-5, which feels a bit more expensive inside, even though these changes have been definitely worthwhile. In this high-spec Highlander model, there's no front-wheel drive version. They're both all-wheel drive, but in every other variant available in the Tucson range, you can get a front-wheel drive version, which does save you money if that's important to you. So, how does it drive? Well, the Tucson was already one of the more impressive offerings in the midsize SUV segment because it's got an Australian tune. And that tune has been retuned for this facelifted version. And what it results in is a slightly smoother ride and slightly more progressive steering. That mightn't matter to you. You might not care about that, but generally it's better to drive than it was. As for the drivetrains, I've already tested the diesel with the new 8-speed automatic and it's smooth, refined, quiet, pretty much everything you'd want from a diesel-engined SUV. And it's frugal as well. As for the turbo petrol, there's still some lag from the transmission when you're stopping and starting in traffic or even when you're manoeuvring when you're trying to film something. You've just got to watch out for that because it does take a little bit of getting used to. It's not like a regular automatic transmission but it's not as bad as some of the dual clutch transmissions we've seen over the years. We're just upset that there are no paddle shifters for you to play with because that's what dual clutches are for. Although, if you're buying a Tucson, you're not necessarily buying a car that's supposed to be a lot of fun. Not that you won't have fun in a Tucson. It does corner really well, it grips nicely, and it steers well too. Being the high-spec model, we're on 19-inch alloy wheels with low-profile tyres, so there is a little bit of road noise to contend with, but it's not deafening by any stretch of the imagination. And also, you do get the benefits of the added grip from those tyres. They do hang on pretty well in tight, sharp corners. Obviously, being an SUV, it rides a little bit higher than a hatchback or a sedan, so there is some body roll to contend with, but generally the compliance and the comfort on offer across the Tucson range is pretty impressive. As you may know, Hyundai has built a bit of a reputation for its long-term ownership. It's got a five-year unlimited kilometer warranty, which used to be really impressive, but more and more brands are catching up now. So it's not as much of a buying promise as it used to be, but still, it's got a lifetime cap price servicing plan and you get up to 10 years of roadside assist and map updates if you get a car with sat-nav. All of those add a bit of value to the purchase. The updated Hyundai Tucson is an improvement on what was already a pretty well-rounded package and the availability of the safety equipment across the entire range is a welcome move. But some competitors offer some of the safety kit as standard in their entry-level models, and maybe Hyundai should have thought of that before offering up this facelifted version. Tell us what you think, be sure to read the full review, and don't forget, hit subscribe on our YouTube channel.